In March 2022, the European Commission issued a press release announcing their plans for a new eco-design framework. This approach would replace the old framework and focus on eco-design requirements for sustainable products. One centerpiece of this plan is the Digital Product Passport DPP, a unique identifier used to track information about consumer products. The DPP is an essential tool for handling the demands of the Commission Council's directive. What is Digital Product Passport? Think about your national passport. It contains details about your identity, such as your citizenship, physical characteristics, and travel history. In the same way, a DPP provides a collection of information about a particular product. Details can include ingredients or components used in the product, sustainability and circularity considerations, strategies or metrics for reusability and recyclability, repairability, durability, and upgradability considerations, energy efficiency metrics, compliance data used to establish environmental, etc. Compliance information can include certificates, such as health product declarations and life cycle assessments. A DPP might also contain additional information like a bill of materials, BOM, or product environmental compliance status, e.g. EU ROSE, EU REACH, EU POP. What are DPPs used for? The central purpose of a digital product passport is to encourage sustainability and recycling or reuse. Stakeholders add product information to the DPP across each step of its life cycle. This data is distributed along whole value chains and becomes accessible to all participants. The benefits come from better awareness of the materials or goods used in the product life cycle and their embedded environmental effects. Which products require a digital product passport? In May 2023, the Council of the European Union adopted its general approach position for re-establishing its eco-design framework. The new regulation would repeal Directive 2009-125 EC, replacing it as the Eco-Design Framework Directive. Examples of industries positioned to use DPPs. Construction Products. The Construction Products Regulation, CPR, proposed March 2022, describes requirements for safer and more environmentally friendly materials. Batteries. The EU Battery Regulation, implemented in 2026, proposes changes across many products and sectors dependent on cell-based energy storage. DPPs will be used extensively for traceability and targeted recycling initiatives. Textiles. The EU Strategy for Sustainable and Circular Textiles, March 2022, sets design and recyclability requirements for textiles, focused on extending the product life cycle. The popularity of online shopping has also made the Commission consider regulations limiting the destruction of unsold clothing. Other Sustainable Products New Eco-Design Framework for Sustainable Products, proposed March 2022, to delineate other products and industries adopting DPPs. DPPs for Electronics With the repealing of 2009-125 EC, the Commission is positioned to rejuvenate other product eco-design regulations. Relevant sectors include Electronic displays and televisions, following EU 2019-2021 asterisk Computers and servers, following EU 617 2013 and 2019 424 External power supplies, following EU 2019-1782 What else should I know about DPPs? In 2020, the European Commission introduced the Circular Economy Action Plan CEAP. It serves as one of the fundamental pillars of the European Green Deal regarding sustainable growth. The objective of CEAP is the improvement of sustainability, circularity, and energy efficiency of products. On 30 March 2022, the Commission presented the Digital Product Passport as part of the proposal for an Eco-Design for Sustainable Products Regulation ESPR. The DPP is a product-specific dataset that establishes product disclosure requirements. Consequently, it improves product traceability and makes all the relevant data about a particular product available to all stakeholders, including consumers and producers. On the 22nd of May 2023, the Council of the European Union adopted the position proposed in ESPR. This statement confirmed the Council's plans to re-establish its framework for eco-design requirements and sustainable products. Digital Product Passports, Interested Parties The Council lists transparency as a central attribute of the DPP. Indeed, 
Many users of a digital product passport desire a product history that is clear and easy to follow. Vested parties with access to a product's DPP can include the European Commission, the original manufacturers of the product, importers and distributors responsible for spreading the product to international markets, end users for physical goods or customers for services, recycling firms and aftermarket repair service providers, refurbishment and remanufacturing facilities, public interest organizations, other competent national authorities, examples of DPPs across Europe. Here are examples of digital product passports throughout Europe. Product Circularity Data Sheet PCDS, of Luxembourg. Circular Product Data Protocol for the Textile Industry. Circ Thread for Home Appliances. Surpass. Collaborative Initiative for a Standard-Based Digital Product Passport for Stakeholder-Specific Sharing of Product Data for a Circular Economy. Do you still have questions about digital product passports? Contact EnviroPass and connect with one of our experts.